Hello and welcome to the Strio Track Shop. Uh, what we have here is our 13 by 1.25 forged four piston uh, aluminum four piston system uh, for drum spindles. Uh, this bad boy will fit under some 16 inch wheels. Uh, the caliper is very radially compact uh, that it, it fits under some 16s but mostly 17 inch wheels and uh, we do have a template available for download, uh, free download obviously. Uh, on our website, so you know, take your time, print that off, uh, and check what uh, if this will clear your wheels. Um, this system, uh, you know, comprises of, like I said, the 13 by 1.25 rower ring mounted to an aluminum hat, and we did that uh, basically to move the caliper inboard, and that enables us this system to clear the most amount of wheels. It's very flat from the wheel mounting pad face uh, past the caliper and then out. So most wheels aren't flat on the back, they all have some amount of bulge here around the spoke. So this, this system really does fit a very wide range of uh, 17 inch wheels, some 16s. Um, the nice thing about putting this on a two piece, uh, using a two piece rotor is that we were able to drop three pounds uh, of weight from a similar sized uh, rower, actually only a 13 by 1.1 1 .1, uh, one piece rower, solid iron rower. This is three pounds light of this rower. Uh, we were able to do that by minimizing this this here to be only the pad uh, swept face. It doesn't need to be any bigger. Uh, the rower cools uh, well enough as it is. It has plenty of mass. Uh, it's directional vanes, uh, directional cooling vanes for exceptional uh, cooling and uh, or heat evacuation. Um, it uh, fits drum spindles. We are working on a system for this with disc spindles. Check our website, see when that's going to be available. Uh, we have a, a, a plate here, steel plate with a billet aluminum bracket that mounts this direct on the drum spindle. The caliper we use is a very nice uh, aluminum caliper. Uh, it only weighs 7.2 pounds, uh, fully loaded with pads. Uh, it's a forged, uh, stress flow forged caliper, and what that means is it's it's not machined from a, a billet chunk. Uh, and by forging it this way, it's actually uh, stronger uh, and uh, than than machining it from a billet uh, block. Um, it has uh, bleed screws, four bleed screws. This just enables us to use the same caliper for both sides, so you only bleed the top one inboard and outboard. Pads are very easy to change. You pull this pin here and pads pop out. The pads are absolutely enormous. They're very thick. Uh, thick pads last a long time and they also help to insulate the heat from the rotor, uh, insulated from the, getting it into the pistons and your fluid. Pistons are stainless steel. It's got square edged uh, seals on here. Uh, it's a very nice piece uh, and mounts as such. So uh, what we're going to do now is strip this down and uh, take it over to a car and uh, show you how easy it is to install. Okay, so here we are over at the car uh, and as you can see the uh, spindle has been uh, stripped down and all the old brake stuff has been removed. And uh, we cleaned up the snout and uh, inspected the snout for any gouging or grooves or any scoring or anything from any bearings that have gone bad. But uh, this one looks good, so this will stay on the car. Uh, first step in uh, the install of this uh, brake system would be to put the bracket onto the spindle. Uh, and as you can see, it's a two piece design. This is a steel plate uh, that is laser cut, uh, and then uh, it's yellow zinc chromate plated for corrosion protection. And then we have an aluminum bracket uh, that uh, bolts onto here. Obviously, it's all red Loctite. This is all shipped assembled, and there's a left hand and a right one, so you don't have to mess around with any of this stuff. Um, and this was obviously what mounts the, the caliper. Uh, to this and uh, basically this will fit over the spindle like so uh, and then uh, we have grade 8 bolts that would run through these four holes here we're going through the stock holes so you don't have to do any modifying of your of your spindle or your car four of them and then the nuts are a, uh, a hex nut with a flange uh, serrated uh, serrated portion on there and uh, what I like about these is you can reuse them as many times as you like and like a nylock which the nylon after a while I only use them a couple of times and then I end up throwing them away because they don't hold uh, they don't grip the threads anymore after the nylon has been 
on and off a few times it kind of uh, goes hard and sort of forms the shape of the thread and no longer deforms and, and uh, holds the thread anymore so I usually only recommend using them maybe three three or four times until you uh, notice that and then throw them away and buy new ones so on items like these that might come on and off the car especially a track car uh, you know every year or so when you're magna fluxing spindles and checking stuff you want to not be chucking away nuts if you can help it. Okay, so uh, these get torqued to uh, 40 foot pounds. So we'll adjust the torque wrench here. Okay, and uh, grab the right socket, 916 socket here. Tighten these up. nice thing about this kit is uh, the caliper positioning is rear of the spindle upright, meaning this, this side, like trailing edge. What I really like about that is it makes ducting uh, in from the front really easy and very accessible. There's no caliper in the way, nothing in the way. It's very easy to get a nice big hose in there and get some efficient ducting going on. Having said that, this system works so well. Uh, I uh, usually end up taping up my ducts at most racetracks uh, just to keep some heat in things. These cars are so light and this brake kit works so well, it's usually not really needed. Uh, unless you run very high horsepower or carrying a lot of weight, uh, or you're just a demon late breaker. <laughs> so there we have it, that's that installed, very simple. Uh, next up would be to install the hub. We've already packed the, the inner bearing and installed the seal in the hub. Uh, so that's nice and simple. We just slip this uh, assembly then over the spindle snout. Uh, install the outer bearing. Then the keyed washer. And then the nut. This hub is actually fitted with our upgrade uh, to the ARP studs. If you want to run long studs with open-ended wheel nuts, this is the one uh, to choose for that. Standard studs are short enough that you can run most uh, closed-end lug nuts if you don't want these great big things sticking out and having that race car look. So we just want to tighten up this nut. Tighten enough until you feel a pinch and the slowdown there. Enough. Back it off just a hair. There we go. And there's this little keyed cap that goes over there. And you might need to just adjust the nut position just to, so that you can get access to the cotter pin hole, like so. Put the cotter pin in. is I bend one piece down and one piece up. Like so. Install the dust cap. Okay, there's the hub all installed. Uh, next piece would be to install the rotor. It's really simple, it's a very nice uh, piece as you can see. It all comes all pretty safety wired and all the bolts are installed and when you replace the rotor ring when that time eventually comes, these are very heavy duty rotors. Uh, they're actually all USA uh, made castings. We don't use any offshore rotors, these are very high quality uh, pieces. When you, the time does come that you do need other ones, uh, I do recommend that you buy the rotor rings and replace the bolts. Um, we usually like to sell them that way because the bolts see quite a lot of uh, heat cycles and it's just uh, good insurance to replace those. 
And the way you want to wire them is just how it's shown, is you don't want to daisy chain them all together, uh, because then if the wire breaks, uh, all of them could potentially come loose, whereas this way, if one does get snagged or brittle or break or something, then you do have some redundancy with the other ones. So that's the way that we like to do it. Um, so the row has come with a sticker on them. It's not actually shown on this one, but they will have stickers on them saying left hand and right hand. Uh, and that denotes obviously the right side of the car. So you have the cooling vanes running to the rear of the car. Very simply just place the rotor onto the hub. Make sure it seats up on the uh, hub centric uh, shim. That is, that we will send you, but you won't notice it usually because it's already pre-installed on the hub. Uh, and that, that centers things on the hub and makes sure that the rotor is nice and uh, centric to the hub and not hanging down on the studs and then oscillating around uh, when the wheel gets up to speed. So to keep that in position, I usually like to just put a lug nut on there to stop the rotor from flopping around while we carry on with the rest of the install. There we go. Alright, there you have it. That's the rotor all installed. Okay, so next up would be the caliper install, which is a piece of cake. Make it easy for us to get access to everything. Uh, the bolts, uh, you want to put a dab of red Loctite on the bolts that hold the caliper on. And uh, really, it's it's simple. You just slip the slip this over here. Put your Loctite on the bolts, and line up the caliper uh, mounting ears with the hole in the bracket. And tighten these up. Okay, these go to uh, 70 foot pounds. Just need to use this little guy to get this one in. Incidentally, this system is also available on a 12 inch diameter row with the exact same caliper. 12 by one and a quarter rower, and that one will fit in 15 inch wheels. We've managed to package that so tightly that it has quite a big rower, but will still fit in a size in a 15 inch wheels. Most 15 inch wheels, obviously, uh, you'll need to use the template that we have on our website, download that, check to see that this will this will fit. Uh, but it does fit quite a lot of 15 inch wheels, so we'll just set the torque wrench here to 70 foot pounds. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so the last thing to do would be to install the braided lines. Very simply, uh, there's a caliper uh, fitting. This end goes in the caliper in the back side in the middle. This 90 degree end would attach to the uh, caliper fitting. And then you would route the hose up and away from any moving suspension components and into your bracket on the frame rail 65, 66 and early 67 cars late 67 and up cars, uh, your bracket is usually uh, part of the old original rubber flex hose and uh, that is gone now where you've taken off your rubber hose so we would send you a uh, bracket that you would mount to your frame rail and that would secure this with the regular kind of brake line clip. So uh, when you're running these hoses it's imperative and critical that you uh, make sure that the hose obviously isn't going to hit any moving suspension components or, or anything basically that is going to come in contact with the hose when the car is cycling up and down, suspension's up and down and the, and the wheels are turning left and right and what I usually do is remove the spring from the suspension 
and cycle it up with a jack uh, as I turn left and right and, and check to see if it does look like it's going to hit something or it does hit something then loosen off one of these fittings, move the hose somewhere else uh, retighten and then recheck again at all, all different heights and left and right. Uh, you obviously don't want these hoses uh, coming into contact with anything chafing on something or uh, you know snagging on something and being ripped off that's very bad. Uh, so there you have it there's our 13, point, uh, 13 by 1.25 uh, rotor 4 piston forge brake system. Uh, it's a snap to install uh, as you can see it works exceptionally well if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, for pricing and more information, we have an awful lot of tech on our website about this system. Uh, customer install pictures and, and whatnot. Uh, visit our website, and that address is www.streetortrack.com.